Taking a part in Nintendo Wii can be pretty daunting if you're not sure which screws go where. And uh, when you're trying to put it back together, it can get even more difficult because there's a bunch of different layered shields and plates that you have to put in in a certain order. And there's nine different types of screws, different lengths, different pitches with different screw heads holding all of it together. Uh, it's really important to get all of them right. Mismatching screws can lead to a lot of different troubles. Everything from stripping sockets, damaging the case, uh, not using the right screw and then having it come loose after assembly and shorting something out. And a worst case scenario probably being wrecked motherboard traces. All these things are a reality if you don't match up the screws right. So uh, with that, let's go over how to reassemble a Nintendo Wii properly. This is Garmin Precision Repair, and uh, maybe this is where you are with your Nintendo Wii. Maybe you disassembled it, you're trying to clean it, and then as you're taking it apart, you went a little quick, and now you have all these different screws, different planks, different sizes. So now you want to put it all back together. The question is, how do you do it? And how do you make sure you don't run the wrong screw in? in the wrong place and hit a motherboard trace or hit, uh, you know, go through a piece of plastic or you know, put the wrong screw in the wrong place and cause some kind of irreversible damage, which is very, very easy to do uh, depending on what you're working on. Let's start first by separating all the different screws. Okay, there we go. Now we have all the screws organized. All our screws are neatly organized together and prioritized. We're gonna end up using a lot of these and these and these. And we're going to migrate over. Once you know where all these screws go, putting a Wii back together is very, very easy. Here's where all the GameCube controller port moldings are. If you notice, you'll see the same kind of pattern on the RF case. So, notice it just fits on real nice and smooth. That's like a reference point. See this edge here? It's 45 degree angle. This pattern goes right there. Put this down right here, like so. Get the motherboard some cushion. Next up. Now, four of these screws, four of these screws will go towards the heat sink. I can put this on like a tire, a cross pattern. Okay, so now the heat sink's on. All right, next we'll put the shielding back on. And before we put the shielding back on, let's make sure the ribbon cable's in good. Just for fun, let's take it out. And then 
this gently, hold it in place, and push down. There we go. Don't be afraid of the ribbon cable. Don't fear the ribbon. As far as I know, this, uh, the black band, the uh, side of the cable that's in mourning, should I say, goes on the outer end. You can use this as a reference point for the shielding of which way it's supposed to go. Let's say it's upside down. Well, that's not going to work. This here, the memory card port's here. So, first, let's slide this power cable in here. Slide it. That come up and we'll get this here. There we go. Make sure everything fits good. Make sure all these are in place here. Cams or centering pins or whatever you want to call them. There we go. One of the easiest things to help you in reassembling this is the shorthand of the shielding here. See an arrow? Go for the short screws. See an X? Don't put it in just yet. See the square? It probably needs something like this, or this. Now that we know the shorthand they were trying to use, putting all these in, should be very easy to do. Next thing you want to do, see this lip here? This lip, you can kind of see this indentation from where it was sitting all that time. It slides in there. See this slot in here? This slot. Slide over the top. Use the entire piece to turn around this, uh, this band here. And then that makes it much easier. Much, much easier. Take the disc drive out. With this piece here, the best frame of reference for it, see this box cut out in here? This slit. This slit is square with the black and gray wires.
The only marking that's a little confusing, here, here you have an arrow pointing to this screw. It's basically asking for this screw here. It wants a little silver Phillips head screw like that one. This marking in every other place on this board implies short screw straight through the motherboard to the case. Except for here, where it goes through this plate too. Then the next one with this square is the same exact thing. It's going through two plates to the motherboard. Then lastly, you got this one here, which again, different plate, different from this one, different from that. Strongly, strongly recommend using something that's magnetic so that way you can pick it up and with ease glide it in. And then if it falls, in this case, it fell in perhaps the worst possible scenario. It's in there pretty deep. Let's see if we can get it. How about it? Okay. Now, I'm going to do use this. Because I have the clearance, and this is really, really magnetic, so I don't have to worry about it dancing around like with this smaller screwdriver. And then I can tighten it with something a little more appropriate. Like that. And there we go. Now it's in there. Now it looks nice. If I did not have a magnetic screwdriver, if that screw fell in there, that would have been a nightmare to get out. I would have had to take every one of these screws out. I would have had to take everything apart again, except for the heat sink. Working on something like this with all these different screws, it's already a bit of a puzzle, and it's something Especially if it's your first time around doing it, it requires a little bit of patience. And you want to reserve that patience as much as possible for uh, you know, not digging screws out of things. Next up. You have a little tongue slot here. Go around that wire. You could just take this out.
and then before it's all the way back in, slide this. Okay, now we're out of the black screws. We're done with all the short silver screws. And we're done with all the long ones, because there's only two aside from the uh, foreign heat sink. I've heard that sometimes you'll get long silver screws for the fan, but this particular weave, it's black screws. If it doesn't want to go, I'll just wiggle it a little bit. Hope it finds center. There. So that's one, two. Right here. I'm not tightening them down just yet. I want to see how these all kind of mesh first. There we go. Still got a couple more black screws to go through. Still have yet to tighten these. One, two, three, three black screws along the back where the plugs and the AV ports and the sensor bar port is. Then you got two around the GameCube memory card slots. Right after the heatsink wall, it's one, two. And around the heatsink itself, three, four, five, six, and seven for the fans. Eight in that corner back there. We still have two more of these left. That is properly in place. We still have our nut in there. Be careful with that. Good. Pull back on the slit. Like so. Pull back on that lip a little bit. Just to help it through. And then before all this clamps down, a little slack. Okay, now we're ready to put the optical drive in. Now 
this is something that definitely requires a little bit more patience. Go slow. Don't try to rush it. Don't fear the rhythm cables. Do be gentle with them. Make sure they're tight. And then you want to twist. Twist and get this back under here. Make sure all these are in the right way. Cheap. The rest of this electric tape just cover up in there. To at least to get these started. Really, really want to use magnetic. For that reason. Very picky about where it wants to go. At least get it started with something magnetic. Even if it means you hit the ball, it goes slow. Slow, slow, and then maybe finish up with something that's a little more appropriate sized. Good. I'm going to use this. getting to a point where we're starting to run out of pieces. Gently. Want this to go over on both sides here. The shielding that's under it. 
And same on this side. I'm going to go under, under. bend anything, don't want to warp anything. That is just a little too much, a little too much stress put on it, I don't like that. I like that a little better. Might not be exactly perfect from factory. That's okay. this point, I don't believe there's any more internal screws. This corner here lines up with that corner back there. That helps it to stay in place, so that way when you guide it on, 
Let's stay in place. Again, easy, gentle, gentle, gentle. You can tell I'm not a uh, not an expert on Nintendo Wii. Honestly, I think the only game I ever really played for it much was uh, like New Super Mario Brothers Wii when that came out. I never had one personally. I think GameCube was my last Nintendo system. I did have a 3DS too. I was wanted to play Smash Brothers on a portable. When they announced Smash Brothers for 3DS, I got one the same day it came out. Pretty happy about that. Anyway, still got one, two, three, four, five, and six. And for that, we're going to need some tri wing. One here. Just drop these in. Almost to the finish line now. Only thing I don't like. Only thing I don't like are some of these scuff marks. So I'm just gonna clean this a little bit more. A little bit more. See how nice it cleans up. Got some here. Look at that. that cleaned up nice. Now I got some here too. So. Cleaned up good. Cleaned up good. So you go, Let's pop this back on. You want to have this on before you put the faceplate on. So, 
these go on the edges here. And these, the shorter ones, go towards the back. Two of these towards the back, longer ones towards the front. So let's put these back. Just about done. It's upside down. We'll get this last screw here. That back in place. One surefire way to know for sure that the longer one goes in there is that it barely bites on. It barely bites on to that thread. It's alright. It's okay. Get the CMOS battery back in. Seems like a good idea. And last but not least, we got the faceplate. Uh, let's see if I can do this in a way. Camera angles are still something I'm trying to fight. You want the notch to be on the higher side when you put it in. There's just enough slack. Might actually be a little easier to just pick up the console and position it. That way you don't have to put as much stress on the wire. Again, go slow. Better to waste a couple seconds than waste a couple of these, or waste a couple of these, or especially waste a couple of those. Let's see. So, one last little trick. Make sure this notch goes in between here and here, like so, and like so. If you have to, it might actually be a little easier to go in at an angle and kind of fight your way up like that, and then push this back down at an angle like so, then there we go. It's looking good. It's looking nice. Now, put these screws back.
almost, almost, almost back together. Just need to put these last two screws in. Just gotta get these ones. Got our tri wing. That's every screw. Every screw. Now what we have to do is start putting the rubber feet back on. Light. We've got a stand. Okay. Here we've got our Sears Roebuck and Co. television again. We've got this Wii. Let's turn it on. And perfect. If you saw my last video where I had this taken apart and cleaned up and haphazardly put together, you may have noticed there was a lot of uh, static and interference on the screen. And that's one of the nice things about testing on a TV like this using RF, having it hooked up like this. If there's a one place where you're going to see interference and in a lot of it, if something is done slightly wrong, it's on something like this. Got some Gretcher stickers on it too. Got Walmart. Got a 311. Alright, enough about that. Let's see, does the Wii move work? Looks like it does. Uh, how about we try this? Let's see if the disk drive works. Okay, slid in good. Everything looks like it's acting okay. Okay, looks like it's reading.
explains everything. Try all these GameCube ports out. Alright, how about Melee? We'll, we'll try it with Melee. I think this memory card has there's records on it that have like all the. Probably good if we eject the disc first. Disc ejects good. to be working pretty good. All these trophies. Alright.
the best stage ever. I suck at this game now. I used to be able to beat event 51. Albeit with a lot of profanities and frustration. In many years. Well over a decade. Thank <laughs> you. 
The only reason I continued was just just to hit Falco with Falcon Punch. It's not even really funny. That's kind of funny. <laughs> All my life's full of things to feel. One's an original, uh, one's a Wii Motion Plus. Last one to try is this odd jungle green. DK64, not version. Uh, looks like this works too. Not bad.